Hello and welcome to this course. Let's begin with the most obvious question. What is Gulp? Uh, Gulp is a task runner, or at least that's one description. Another description would be that it's a toolkit for automating time-consuming tasks. Now, whatever you want to call it, there is one characteristic that stays the same. Automation. So, basically, you would use Gulp to automate stuff that you would normally have to do manually. For example, manually compiling SAS, manually optimizing images, manually refreshing your page in the browser, and so on. Well, these three actions can be consolidated into independent tasks. Then you would take those tasks and have Gulp run them automatically. That's why tools like Gulp and Grunt are called task runners. Now, a very big difference between Gulp and the other task runners out there is the way it handles file operations. Gulp will essentially pass a data stream from one plugin to the next without actually writing that stream in a temporary file in between these tasks. That's called piping or streaming. Now, if you search the web for a definition for piping, you'll probably get something very technical. So I'm going to try to simplify it a little bit. Uh, a Gulp workflow works with several different plugins that perform various operations on certain files. To give you an example, the SAS plugin will take a SAS or an SCSS file and compile it into a CSS file. Uh, the uh, Uglify plugin will take a normal JavaScript file and it will minify it. So, the thing with uh, piping is that you can take a set of files and you can run them through a set of plugins or through one plugin and you would get um, a different type of file in the end. Exactly what I said with the SAS plugin. You start with an SCSS file and you end up with a CSS file. Now, normally, these types of task runners will uh, write temporary files to the disk. Well, Gulp doesn't do that. It uses data streams. So, the contents of that file is actually preserved in a buffer. It's a stream of data, basically. And it's just passed on from plugin to plugin until it reaches its final destination. And in between these plugins, that stream suffers some changes. So what you can do, for example, is uh, start with the SCSS files, pass them down to the SAS plugin. Now, the SAS plugin accepts SCSS files and returns CSS files. So the data stream uh, that you get after the SAS plugin is different from the one that entered the plugin. And then you can do more things with that. Maybe you run them through an auto prefixer, right? So Gulp will take that data stream, it's going to run it through the auto prefixer plugin, which accepts a CSS file and also returns a CSS file. But in between, it um, adds the, all the necessary vendor prefixes. So it also changes that file contents. And finally, you can minify it, for example, or you can write it to the disk. So that's essentially how piping works, right? You pass data at the end of, at the uh, beginning of the stream, and you get a different type of data at the end. And in the middle, you have these uh, intermediary points which perform certain operations on that data stream. So, um, hopefully, you get a basic understanding of what Gulp is. Uh, as we're going to build this uh, entire workflow, I'm sure things will get more clear for you. Uh, but for now, that's a very uh, quick definition of Gulp. Now, uh, in the next lesson, we're going to have a look at the Gulp setup. We're going to talk about Node, the terminal, how to get things up and running. I'll see you there.